always I ask the question. What is needed in the world? An official welcome from Qatar's Emir for the Nigerian president, Mohamedou Buhari. The president is on the latest trip of many to boost Nigeria's standing abroad. He's looking for support for his crackdown on corruption at home and to encourage much needed investment in his country's ailing economy. The two men also talked oil. Qatar is the current president of OPEC and Nigeria is Africa's largest oil producer. But today's low prices are devastating the Nigerian economy, which has long depended on the export of oil. He's a man under pressure, barely nine months into the job. Nigeria's president, Mohamedou Bahari, talks to Al Jazeera. Mr. President, thank you very much indeed for talking to us here at Al Jazeera. You're here in Qatar, currently the president of OPEC. What are your thoughts about OPEC policy over the past year or so of prioritizing market share over the price of a barrel of oil? Well, uh, OPEC has to act together to save the situation. Uh, it has always been an interesting aspect. If you can produce less and earn more, why produce more and earn less? I have never been able to understand it, uh, but uh, uh, the market forces uh, influenced by a lot of uh, political decisions, uh, both regional and global, and uh, we have to live by it. There are those within OPEC, obviously, who can manage, who can endure low oil prices better than others. Nigeria is one of those countries that doesn't endure low prices very well. Does OPEC then necessarily reflect the interests of your country? OPEC as an, as an organization has to be mindful of economic uh, conditions in each member country because that will influence that country's uh, ability to uh, go along with OPEC uh, important decisions. In Nigeria, uh, we were unable to diversify our economy. Hence, we are much more uh, disadvantaged by the lower oil prices. And uh, uh, OPEC may try to help us, but really uh, it's basically our own fault. Indeed, but do you think that the policy adopted by the, the major supplier of course, Saudi Arabia, which has enormous foreign reserves, do you think that the policy adopted by them and the Gulf countries benefits those uh, with, f with fewer reserves, with much smaller reserves, like your country, like Venezuela. Uh, I'm suggesting that there's a two-tier system within OPEC. Yes, I, I, uh, I think I've just mentioned that uh, there are individual national interest, there are regional interest, and then there is OPEC interest. Uh, on top of that, there are global interests. Uh, uh, large uh, expo uh, producers like Russia that are not in OPEC, that are swing producers. If, if Russia decides to go flat, it can affect, it can disorganize OPEC uh, uh, principles of control of production. Is there an argument, therefore, for Nigeria withdrawing from OPEC? Certainly, under my leadership, Nigeria will not withdraw from OPEC. Uh, between 1976 and 79, I served as a uh, petroleum minister. Uh, I very much value the institution of OPEC, and I think Nigeria will make the necessary sacrifice to remain in OPEC. Okay, well, your economy, as uh, everybody knows, is reeling largely from the effects of low, low oil prices at the moment. You're running a uh, a budget deficit of over 10 billion US dollars. Um, one of the key concerns about the government response to this worsening economic situation has been your insistence on freezing the value of the Naira. Uh, voices, there's a chorus actually, a chorus of 
uh, voices calling on you to devalue the Naira, to allow market forces to prevail. Are you prepared to reconsider? No. I have explained that countries that play around with their currencies are countries that have uh, uh, enormous production capacity. They have factories in place, their infrastructure in terms of power, communications, and security are virtually perfect. Nigeria virtually imports everything from rice to toothpick. Now, if we don't have the money uh, to import those things, what is the value of further developing our Naira? Well, you're going against the advice of the IMF. Uh, why not? The IMF is suggesting If it is against our national interest, why can't we go against the IMF advice? Another plank of your policy response to the economic situation is uh, a halting of imports. You, you've already alluded uh, to some of the vast array of, of imports that Nigeria uh, has been uh, uh, subscribing to. That's now being phased out. This has been criticised as well as starving out local entrepreneurs not being able to get the imported goods that they need to grow their businesses. They say that you're strangling the economy. Yes, that is the theory of it. Nigeria can only afford to live within its means. If we don't have the money, if you don't have the money uh, to back uh, the Naira, for people to uh, buy the dollars and import uh, toothpick, chocolate, uh, rice, uh, glamorous dresses. But what about more essential things like pharmaceutical glass bottles yes. that have to be made to a certain standard? What about steel cabling? Um, again, has to be made to a certain standard in order for it to be fit for purpose. We, in t we, we have pharmaceutical companies in Nigeria, once we open a time, we had a survey of them. We uh, do what is uh, we did what was called uh, institutional strengthening by giving them money to import machinery and essential raw materials. We have already given instruction uh, for the uh, uh, ministries to find out which industries need foreign exchange on a quarterly basis to produce what is, what is essential, like pharmaceutical uh, industry, as you said, uh, and other things, but, but certainly not, not, not to import rice and so on. Going back to the, your policy on the freezing of the value of the Naira, you've opened up effectively a, a, a vast new area of corruption in terms of uh, the parallel market, the black market, is so different. So many people who've been allocated uh, the foreign exchange, which is a narrow group of privileged and elites, are then often selling on that uh, currency on the black market and therefore making a huge amount of money. Another window of corruption has opened up. And this, of course, goes against one of the main tenets of your presidency. I agree with you, but we are going to check that. And we are going to apply sanctions for anybody that was given hard currency, or dollars, officially by the central bank, to go and import essential raw materials, for example, for pharmaceuticals. And then because he can make a hundred naira more by going to foreign market and selling it, we'll, we'll uh, pursue them and we'll furnish them. What about the, obviously, those who are slightly more privileged, uh, like yourself? You've got children studying abroad. There are parents in Nigeria with kids in, in universities and schools abroad who are now facing the possibility of having to pull their kids out, they actually can no longer afford to make the payments for school fees. Well, if the, if the country cannot afford it, so be it. But your children will continue their studies, no doubt. No, those who can afford it can still afford it. But okay. for those that, can, that can't, Nigeria can't uh, they uh, allocate foreign exchange for all those that decided to train their children outside the country. We just can't afford it. So it's tough luck. Well, that's the true situation we are in. 
All right, let's, let's have a look at your first budget, your first budget for 2016, which was presented on time, which surprised so many Nigerians. They're used to their budgets being, being presented way into the financial year. You presented it on time, but it's been described as the worst presented budget ever. Uh, there was budget padding, there were duplications, and there were miscalculations. Um, a suggestion, therefore, that even within your own ranks, there is corruption. I don't know whether it is corruption, uh, but uh, basically, you know, producing the budget is a uh, question of technocrats. And uh, I would like uh, people to assess Nigeria, uh, and especially this government, on where, how we find ourselves. When we came in, we found out there are 42 ministries, and we found out the economy cannot take on 42 ministries. We reduce it to 24. Uh, the permanent secretaries, that means the heads of the ministries, technocrats, uh, 21 of them were removed. We cross post the rest. So uh, people who want to be fair to us should sit and reflect from the president to the ministers to the permanent secretaries who are all taken over after eight successive governments of the opposition now. And we cannot assume that from permanent secretary downwards are uh, just all 100% loyal uh, to the new government. So you think there was an element of sabotage? Certainly. I think, as I said, we are going to apply sanctions. But while it is uh, with this uh, National Assembly, I don't think, I don't want to talk more about it now. Fair enough. Can I just ask your comment on one particular element that has got Nigerians hopping mad, and that is the allocation of 20, around 25,000 US dollars uh, in books for the vice president's office, a figure that outstrips the allocation of uh, book allowances for the national polytechnics. Um, can you comment on that? Because this is a, a, an, an element of the budget that is causing a huge amount of concern in Nigeria. I cannot comment on that until I found out the details. And okay, the other uh, another issue that springs to mind is the allocation of funds for the improvements to the state house clinic, the clinic, of course, that serves you, the vice president, and and some other uh, privileged people as well. When, of course, as we know, the state of most Nigerian hospitals is lamentable, and this is seen as being so unfair and not in keeping with with the promises that you made on election? Well, um, I don't think our decisions are perfect, but we are going to, re to revisit all observations that really uh, are serious enough to be considered. The issue of security votes. Now, security votes are these funds that have got um, opaque destinations and every country has them. And on the face of it, there's not a huge amount of money attached to them in your budget. It's about $50 million, I understand. Uh, but there are about 30 of these security votes. Um, security votes have been described as perhaps the most durable form of corruption in Nigeria. Why don't you just eliminate them completely? You know more about uh, our budget than I do. That's very interesting. But well, don't forget, we are fighting Boko Haram in the northeast. We are fighting the militants uh, in the south south that are daily sabotaging our installation, which is uh, uh, affecting uh, our relationship with investors. Uh, there is insecurity from Gulf of Guinea, which extends from uh, Senegal to Angola. And Nigeria has got all these security problems. So if money is voted for security, I, I don't mind. People can go as far as they can to find out whether that money is being utilized for security or is being put uh, shared in the pocket like the $2.1 billion the previous Precisely. administration did. Precisely. Exactly. That was via security that, votes. $2.9 million was secreted into personal funds by a former national security advisor, uh, uh, Sambo Dasuki. Well, that's what I say. You know more than I do about our budget. But I assure you that uh, if Dasuki is now in detention and all those 
they took that money from him instead of buying the military hard and software uh, being uh, arrested and interrogated. Um, if anybody dares us and do it while we are still there, I think he will correctly predict where he is going to end up. As I've mentioned, um, anti-corruption was one of the major pledges of your campaign. Presumably the thing that uh, propelled you uh, into the front of the minds of Nigerians. Um, we've still not had any conviction though. As you mentioned, uh, Mr. Dasuki is in detention and the commission that you set up to investigate fraud um, is busy, it's working very hard, but there's not been one conviction yet. What can you say to the Nigerian population about your, your campaign against graft? The fact that uh, people that are identified to take public funds without uh, going through the normal uh, system of uh, getting public funds are being detained and they are being interrogated so that there will be successful uh, convictions. Uh, if people are in a hurry, what have they been doing in the last 16 years? Didn't they, they didn't know what was happening during the last 16 years? Um, the security situation which uh, you alluded to um, obviously is uh, one of the greatest challenges that you have in Nigeria today. I'm particularly interested in the Islamic anti-terrorist force that is being put together by Saudi Arabia. Is Nigeria going to be part of this Islamic force? We are part of uh, it because uh, uh, we have got terrorists in Nigeria that everybody knows which claim that they are Islamic. So if there is an Islamic uh, coalition to fight terrorism, Nigeria will be part of it because we, we are casualties of Islamic terrorism. So you said yes to King Salman, Nigeria will be part of yes. this coalition force. Yes. How many, how many troops, how will it work for Nigeria? How will it work in Nigeria's interest practically? Well, that we mentioned under Lake Child Basin Commission, uh, a regional grouping comprising Cameroon, Chad, Niger, Nigeria, and Benin, and we dedicated an, a certain number of troops to be deployed in our own sub-region. And I don't think we have to tell the press the details of that. So you think that Nigeria's security interests are best served by being part of this Islamic coalition against terrorism? Certainly. We, I have just told you uh, it is the Boko Haram itself that declared loyalty to ISIL. Now, ISIL is, is, is basically based in Islamic countries. Now, if there is a coalition to fight terrorism, why can't Nigeria be part of it? While those that are fighting in Nigeria as Boko Haram claim to be Muslim, although what they are doing is anti-Islamic. Indeed. Um, the reason I'm, I'm asking you uh, about this is because there are many in Nigeria. We know Nigeria is roughly evenly split between Muslim and Christians, and Christians are, seem to be complaining and wondering whether uh, President Buhari is taking the identity of Nigeria and turning it into an Islamic country, with the, which they object to. Why, why, why can't those Christians that complain go and fight terrorism in Nigeria or fight uh, uh, the, the militants in the south? It's Nigeria that matters, not the opinions of uh, some religious bigots. So you don't think it changes the, I you're not trying to change the identity, the religious identity of Nigeria? How can I change the religious identity of Nigeria? No religion advocates hurting the innocent. And just because th the Muslims uh, are the ones that claim uh, to be Boko Haram and they are killing innocent people, whether in the church or in the mosque or in the marketplace, then uh, uh, I will just sit and look at them because I too am a Muslim. Islam is against injustice in any form. ISIL, uh, as, as you've mentioned, is perhaps the, the uh, best known threat internationally now. They've now got a foothold in Libya. In fact, Nigerians have been reported, uh, have been seen in CERT fighting alongside uh, Islamic State or ISIL forces. Some people, security analysts, suggest that ISIL's aim actually is to establish some form of, of, of 
domain from Aleppo in uh, Syria all the way down to Abuja. How far do you think that the lack of governance in Libya is impacting upon your own security problem? Yes, well, um, there are a number of people from the sub-region of Sahel, uh, as it was uh, shown in Burkina Faso, in Mali, uh, that um, uh, used to be in Libya. They've got some training, military training, they've got some weapons, and with the demise of uh, uh, Gaddafi regime, they found themselves back into the sub-region, and the only thing they can do is to uh, use weapons. Uh, and they are very vulnerable to anybody who can pay them, and they become available to fight. Would, would you send, would you send uh, Nigerian troops to be part of an international force in Libya? If Nigeria is approached, we can consider it on its merit. Now, security is such a big problem, isn't it? You spoke to me almost exactly a year ago when you were a presidential candidate. You then promised to Nigeria that you would defeat Boko Haram by the end of 2015. Clearly, you haven't. you failed. I haven't failed. I haven't failed. I haven't failed. When we came in, Boko Haram was, in, was effectively in control of 14 local governments. Nigeria has 774 local governments. They hoist uh, their flag and they call themselves in, uh, uh, they name themselves uh, a certain caliphate. But now they are not holding any local government. And they have reverted to improvised explosive devices blowing soft targets. My now point that's, indeed. That's, that's a purely a terrorism which which will be extremely difficult to eliminate. But almost because on it's a Because it is technology. But they are not holding any local government in Nigeria now. So you've, well, you've, you you've flushed them the out of territory, but they are still, they still have the, the capacity to, to kill and maim and instill terror in the population of the Northeast. Yes, using technology, yes. But to organize attacks and overrun police posts, attack military institutions, they cannot do that now. What will you say to the people of Nigeria about uh, the fight against Boko Haram? You've, you've, you've passed your deadline. Uh, your information minister, Lai Mohammed, suggested that uh, Boko Haram had been technically defeated. What are you now saying to the people of Nigeria? This is something that goes to the heart of, of your The people manifesto. of Nigeria know better. They know better than you. They know that 14 of their local governments will be in hell. None will be in hell now. So the people of Nigeria, especially the people in the North East, know better. Let's uh, also look at uh, another problem that seems to be emerging um, under your uh, presidency. You've only been in power nine months, but this problem in the southeast of the country, uh, we're seeing the Indigenous Peoples Organization of, of Biafra, IPOB, they are protesting peacefully for the most part uh, on a regular basis. And there has been video, I could show you some video that's been posted of a very... No, thank you. These are the images the president didn't want to see. They're on the internet and we can't verify exactly what they show, but it appears as though security forces were shooting at unarmed protesters in the southeastern state of Abia. This is footage I can't personally verify, but it looks as though the security forces have gone in very heavy-handedly shooting and there were reported to be seven deaths. I'm wondering, how are you planning to deal with this issue of Biafra? You, of course, have first-hand experience. For a 30-month civil war, at least two million Nigerians were killed. And for somebody to wake up, maybe he wasn't born when there was a fight in Biafra and said he wants Biafra again. We have multi-party democracy system now. Let them organize themselves and uh, vote for, uh, to have a state within a state. But, but to, to, to try and interfere with movement of troops, with economy, uh, looking for Biafra, after losing two million people, I think they are joking with Nigeria's security and Nigeria will not tolerate it. Why don't you invite them for talks? Why should we invite them? 
for the most part, they appear to be young people, as you say, with no recollection yeah, they know what of what the what war, okay. the 1967-70 war. But these are disaffected young men, for the most part, but young women as well, mm -hmm. who are protesting, it would appear, against their reduced economic opportunities. Uh, government allocations to state uh, governments in that region have been reduced by something like 50%. These people How much jobs. was oil costing? For the last 16 years, it was costing from over $140 uh, per barrel, now to sometimes under 30 So the system of allocation has to correspondingly be reduced. So why shouldn't it affect them, if it's affecting the whole of Nigeria? For why do we get the money to give them? Okay, Mr. President, I think that time is up and I need to thank you very much indeed for taking the time to speak thank to me much, and uh, for speaking to Al Jazeera. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.